Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another watercolour painting in my sketchbook. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how I use my watercolours to create an easy, quick and effective wool texture in this cute little knitted bear painting, so I hope you enjoy the video and find it helpful. I started off by drawing a quick outline sketch in pencil in my A5 watercolour sketchbook and lightened the sketch up slightly using a kneaded eraser. I will list all the materials I'm using in the description box, but I'm going to go quickly through them. So I've got my Schmincke Horodam watercolours in pans, and I'm going to be using two round paintbrushes. They are the silver black velvet brush in a size 8, and a smaller size 1 brush that was part of a set by Anna Mason for Rosemary & Co. I've two jars of water, paper towels, and that's about it, so let's get started. Now there are going to be many ways you can paint knitted wool in watercolour, so this is just the way I'm doing it and is by no means the right or only way to go about it. You might prefer something more realistic and detailed, or you may prefer to go even looser. But the way I tend to approach complex patterns is to first start off by ignoring the pattern completely and painting in a base layer over the entire area. This little bear is going to be grey, and I've used a reference photo from Pixabay which I will link down below if you want to check it out and maybe even try it yourself. I'm painting this first layer onto dry paper and rather than use Payne's Grey I decided to use neutral tint as it has a more purpley hue to it which I prefer. This is actually a Winsor & Newton tube paint from their professional range which I squeezed into a pan and added to my palette. I don't think Schmink could do a neutral tint, and I really like this formulation from Winsor & Newton. So I'm starting off with a really watery mix of the neutral tint, which matches up with the lightest areas I can see on the reference photo. I'm using the larger of the two brushes for this, so I can cover a bigger area quite quickly, without having to worry about the paper drying and leaving hard edges. To get a smooth, even first wash, you can also tilt your sketchbook or painting surface a bit, which helps prevent the water settling into puddles. Whilst the paper is still damp, I also drop in more concentrated neutral tint to the areas that appear darker in the reference photo, and let the colour mix and blend on the surface of the paper. The darker areas are seen inside the ears, around the muzzle, and of course where the nose and eyes are going to be. Then I do the same thing for the rest of the bear's arms and body, but still not worrying about any pattern at this stage, so it's really quick, simple and fun. I know this isn't a subject I'd normally paint, but sometimes it's fun to change it up a bit, relax and try something new. I also think it's a good idea to test out different watercolour techniques on a smaller painting like this, before you approach something bigger or more challenging. Then, once you're more confident, you can go ahead and scale things up, after a bit of practice and experimentation. Here again, whilst the paper is damp, I add in more concentrated neutral tint to the darker creases and areas of the bear that are in shadow. Now that's completely dried, I paint in the bear's scarf. For this, I mixed together transparent green gold and added a bit of olive green yellow. I'm still using the size 8 brush and, like before, I'm painting onto dry paper. I used the same colour to paint the pores. I add in more of the olive green yellow to darken up the areas in shadow on the scarf, like I did for the bear's head and body. So, for example, where there are folds in the scarf. The paint is dry now, so if I want softer edges, I can just run along the edges with a clean damp brush. If you're going to do this though, you need to make sure the layer underneath is completely dry to avoid creating watercolour blooms. 
So already this bear is starting to look quite cute, but now it's time to start adding in some of the wool effect. I'm going to start on the paws. I'm using the same more concentrated olive green yellow mix that I used for the scarf. And I used the tip of my size 8 brush and a light pressure so I can get more detailed lines. For the wool effect you can choose whether you go super detailed or work more loosely depending on what your preference is. I wanted to go looser this time so rather than painstakingly painting in every stitch exactly, I tried to simplify the pattern by taking a step back and looking at the overall shapes I could see in my reference photo. I painted some circles around the paw and tried not to make them look too smooth or perfect by using more of a wiggly line to try and imitate the pattern I could see in the wool. And I repeated this on the other paw too. Next, I'm going to darken up the bear's eyes and nose, and for this I use more concentrated neutral tint. Here I paint the shape of each eye in carefully onto dry paper again, but add in a few little lines coming out from the edges of each eye in places just to try and give them a wool-like appearance. I do the exact same thing for the nose, so paint more concentrated neutral tint onto the dry paper, and pull out some short fine lines from the edges, which though not especially obvious now, will add to the overall wool effect when we're done. After painting in these darkest features of the bear, I can now adjust the contrast on other parts of the painting before adding in any wool texture. For this, I turn my attentions to the ears and begin by pre-wetting the paper here again before dropping in some more of that more concentrated neutral tint. I also darken up the folds in the scarf too, using my olive green yellowish from before. Then I go back to the neutral tint to darken up any other areas of the body, adding paint, and then softening out any hard edges with clean water. I'm nearly ready to add some of the pattern in, but before I do that I also want to add some more shading to the bear's belly. And for this I go back to the wet in wet technique for some soft subtle colour transitions. This will help to add shape and form to the bear. With that all dry, I can finally start to add some of that knitted wool effect. I'd marked out a few of the main lines of stitching in pencil on my initial sketch, and I can still see them quite faintly underneath my layers of paint. So to start with, I begin by emphasising those again with a bit more neutral tint. I'm using the tip of my brush to get some really fine lines in, and try to curve them to follow the shape of the bear's belly. I do the same on his arms, switching over to my size 1 brush. I'm not going in with any detail to speak of yet, just marking out some of the main lines of stitching. Looking back at the reference photo, I can see that some of the lines of stitching stand out more than others, and that is my second tip for painting any kind of pattern. You don't have to mark all of it in, especially if you're going for a looser look to your finished piece. By painting in some of the details though, your eye will actually fill in the rest. It makes the job of painting patterns and textures a lot easier and more enjoyable. I do the same thing on the bear's head. And around his nose. So now it's time to add in the suggestion of some individual stitches. 
For this, you want to work on dry paper again to get precise marks. And I'm just adding in little V shapes for this and painting them in between the lines I made earlier to create that knitted look. You can see a bit more clearly what I mean on the scarf here. It doesn't have to be exact or perfect as I'll be adding in a glaze over the top once it's dry to soften out the line slightly anyway. I work over the bear's body in the same way, so painting in little V-shapes in between those solid lines I mapped out earlier. Around the bear's nose, I also extend those little lines that I painted around the edge of the nose at the start to help give it a more knitted look. You can add as much or as little detail here as you like, but the key is not to get too disheartened or bogged down with getting stitches exactly right to match your reference photo. Unless you're going for photorealism, which I'm not today, the reference is just a guide to help give you a rough idea. My V shapes definitely aren't all even, and some of them even change direction in places, but that's where I think watercolour gives you a bit of freedom to be expressive and creative, and like I said earlier, I'm going to be softening all out a bit later on anyway. I think this more laid back approach makes the painting process a lot quicker and less stressful than if you tried to paint in each and every stitch in meticulous detail. And to give you a rough idea, this whole painting took me less than an hour to complete and I really enjoyed it. To help simplify the process even more today, I also stuck to a limited palette this time. Using just neutral tint and transparent green gold mixed with a bit of olive green yellow. And I think this painting exercise, or study, will stand me in good stead for when I want to paint, say, another portrait. I might want to paint someone wearing a knitted hat or jumper, for example. So, instead of trying to tackle everything at once, or render the knitted wool perfectly as you go, splitting up the process into easy, more manageable steps helps make painting what may appear really difficult actually quite easy. So you paint the base and shading for the first few layers, then add any pattern last over the top. But let me know if you have any other methods for painting patterns or textures that you find really helpful and let us know about it by commenting in the box down below. Now having added the rough stitching detail, I wanted to paint a shadow underneath the bear, and for this I pre-wet the paper and added in a mixture of neutral tint and transparent umber. I also added a bit of this colour to the darkest parts of the scarf to try and pull it all together, and the other green parts of wool on the paws too. Then I darkened up parts of the shadow under the bear before moving on to the last stage of this painting, the final glaze. A glaze is just another transparent layer of colour that's painted onto the previous layers and is applied when the paper is completely dry. This was just to change up the colour intensity in a few parts of the bear that still needed to be darker and to soften out some of the stitches that I wanted a little less prominent. I'm quite pleased with how it turned out and whilst not perfect, I think you can get a sense that this little bear is knitted from wool. It was fun, quick and pretty easy to do and I hope you enjoyed watching him come together and found the tips useful. 
If you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you've come across my channel for the first time today, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. I'm thinking of doing some more of these smaller sketchbook paintings in future videos, perhaps using them to demonstrate how I paint other surfaces or textures. So let me know if that's something you'd like to see and maybe drop a few suggestions of any particular areas or topics you'd like me to cover. Thank you all so much for watching, take good care, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.